Good morning, church. As we gather together to worship the Lord, let's read from Psalm 47, which says, O oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. For he is the Lord Most High. He is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together, the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Thank you, Lord, that we can worship you. Thank you that we can gather as your people from wherever we are in all nations of the earth and lift up a sound of praise and worship to the King of Kings. And thank you that your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. So even as we worship you from wherever we are, your presence fills us and your presence fills the place where we dwell. And so we lift our hearts and we unify our hearts together this morning all across our globe and worship and praise the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, for you are worthy to be praised. Amen. Sing holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy to receive glory. Worthy to receive honor. Worthy to receive. All I praise today. Come on, lift him up. Praise him. Praise him and lift him up. Praise him. Exalt his name forever. Praise him. Exalt His name forever. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. He is worthy to receive glory, worthy to receive honor. Lift him up, praise him, exalt his name forever, praise him, praise him and lift him up, praise him, exalt his name forever, exalt his name forever. It's all to stay forever. Oh, we praise you, God. We lift you up. You are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy of my praise. We lift your name, God. Whoa.
Yo 
Do you know there is a great day of reckoning coming for each one of us when we have to stand before Almighty God and give an account of ourselves before Him? Well, Daniel had a beautiful vision of it in the seventh chapter and I want to just refer to it and make some comments about it. And this is how it goes. Daniel chapter 7 and we are reading from verse 9 to 10. It says, I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was as white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. This is a description of God the Father in symbolic terms. Actually, in human words, you can never describe what God looks like. But this symbolic description of God gives us an understanding of His awesome nature, His power, His sovereignty, his supremacy over all things. But above all, in this chapter, we are focusing here on the great day of judgment. You know, many of us live as if everything will go on, and even if we do some things that are terrible, despicable, we can cover it up, blot it out, and forget about it. As a kid, I learned a good lesson. I used to ride my bicycle very fast down the hill. My parents told me not to do that. That was reckless. But I never took any notice of it. And uh, 
So I kept on riding so fast and one day my day of reckoning came. I knocked another kid down. I got on my bike and sped out of there as fast as I could, a classic case of hit and run. And I came home and uh, put the bike away and I sat down in a corner like a saint. But my father and mother knew something was wrong and they asked me what it was. Then at the end of the conversation, my father held me by my hand and took me to the house uh, where that boy was. That was my moment of reckoning. Because I had to come face to face, not only with the boy who got hit, but also his father. Fortunately, nothing happened seriously to the boy. But I can just even now remember the trembling feeling that I had as I had to walk up to that house. The only comfort I had was that my father was with me and he would stand for me. But I had to go and I had to apologize and to see if something needed to be done. We get caught sooner or later. Your sin will find you out. We hear it said oftentimes. Life rolls on, but there is coming a day when all of us have to stand before Almighty God and the books will be opened. The court of heaven will be opened and we will be judged accordingly. Now, we don't like to talk about this. We try to push it out of our minds. And even as Christians, we are not very comfortable when this issue of the great day of judgment is talked about. But it would be totally irresponsible on our part to read it so clearly in the word of God and just to ignore it as if it's not going to happen. And the more we realize about the importance of moral accountability, the fact that we have to face the Lord and give an account of ourselves and that we have no recourse except to be covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the more liberated we will be. Jesus talked about it, about the return in glory. He talked about the day of judgment. He often talked about the need to be accountable and to ensure that we are aware of the fact that God is watching over us. Make no mistake about it. The Bible is clear. It tells us in no uncertain terms that there will be a great day of reckoning for all the peoples of the world and no one will be able to escape. In the book of Revelation, chapter 6, we read like this, verse 14. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, Every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand? You can't get it any clearer than that. And the important thing to understand is that on the day of judgment, we will not be able to blame anybody else. This portion of scripture tells us 
that there is coming a day when there will be perfect justice and God will call into account every person, big and small, powerful and powerless, free and bound, regardless of ethnicity, regardless of status, regardless of everything else, we will have to stand before the Lord. And we will not be able to blame other people for running away from God. Oftentimes you hear people who say, well, I have nothing more to do with the faith, with the Bible or with Christianity because I was let down by a church leader or some such experience that they can call upon, which seems to give them some temporary solace that they can be irresponsible about their relationship with God. That's actually a deception and a very dangerous one because we cannot blame anybody. All of us have a free will. We have an opportunity to investigate and find the truth. And the Bible declares very clearly that salvation is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and that we must come to him and call upon him no matter what our background no matter what our experiences no matter what we have gone through that jesus we can touch us and save us and set us free and it doesn't matter whether there are hypocrites around whether the church is not delivering the goods or whether church leaders betray or fall or do wrong things, that is immaterial. Those are all men. But God is eternal. He's called the Ancient of Days here to signify the fact that He has no beginning, no ending. He is eternal. And that He is going to call us into account. In the next portion that refers to the Ancient of Days in the same chapter. The term Ancient of Days is used three times in the book of Daniel. And uh, the next section is from verses 13 to 14. What does it say about the Ancient of Days? I was watching in the night visions and behold one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Here Daniel sees a vision of the ancient of days with the son of man. The son of man is the Lord Jesus Christ and after telling us about the reality of judgment here we are given a description of the end times the great happening that we all look forward to which is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ the prophets described it the apostles described it Jesus talked about it in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25 and verse 31, Jesus said that one day uh, when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. So Jesus clearly identified himself as the Son of Man. Daniel probably had no real idea what he was seeing here because this was about 500 years before Jesus was born. And in this chapter, Daniel gives a description 
of the kingdoms of this world. Of course, he was living at the time of the kingdom of Babylon. He was in Babylon. That was in the 6th century BC. And after Babylon came the kingdom of Medo-Persia. And after that came the Greek Empire. And then after the Greek Empire came the Roman Empire, which is the longest lasting empire in human history. And Daniel gives all this before they actually happen. This prophecy that Daniel gives is given 2,500 years ago. He was living during the period of the Babylonian kingdom and he describes those kingdoms in terms of various beasts. Lion, leopard, bear and so on. And in this second description of the ancient of days, we are shown that all kingdoms of this world are transient temporary. Even the longest lasting kingdom rises only to fall. And there is only one kingdom that lasts forever, that is the kingdom of God. And in the second aspect of the vision, we are told about the end times when the judgment has taken place and all the kingdoms of this world come under the total dominion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Many people ask the question, why is there so much suffering in this world? Why is there so much evil in this world? The Bible has an answer to that. We are living in a fallen world. And people have strayed away from God. And it's the sins of this world that cause all the calamities and difficulties and the perils that we experience. And in order to deal with the problem of sin, God sent his own son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was virgin born, lived a sinless life, and died an atoning death, and by the shedding of his blood has set us free. And when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and we experience his grace and forgiveness, we repent of our sins, we confess our sins, and we encounter his salvation in our lives, we become citizens of the kingdom of God. And we live in this world while we are citizens of heaven. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And we live as the children of God, knowing very well that despite all the trials and tribulations that go on in this world, there is going to be a terminus to those troubles when Jesus returns. So dear friend, if you are facing various trials and crises and difficulties in your life, and you are asking the question, when are these troubles going to end? I can't give you a promise that every trouble that we face will end. Some will go on till the end of our lives. But some troubles will come to an end, thank God. But there is coming a day when Jesus will return and all troubles will come to an end. There will be a new heaven and a new earth and that is an aspect that Daniel describes here about the fact that all kingdoms and dominions will be under the total authority of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But meanwhile, if you're a person who, are, who is not a citizen of the kingdom of God, I want to invite you to open your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and come to him and experience his forgiveness. 
Because when you are apart from Christ, you are living dangerously. I don't mean physically. I mean that as far as your eternal destiny is concerned, you are living dangerously. You may try to forget about the day of reckoning, but the day of reckoning will come. When heaven's court will be opened, the books will be opened, and every one of us will have to give an account. So where is our refuge? Our refuge is in our Lord himself, who provided the way of salvation for every one of us, who made certain that the way was open for us to be forgiven of our sins, so that whatever sin we have committed, whatever iniquity or transgression we have done before the Lord, we can be forgiven. Indeed, in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 43, verse 25, these are comforting words that Isaiah says about the Lord. These are the Lord speaking. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. No one else can say that. No one else can do that. Oh yes, we can forgive people for wrongs they do to us. But that iniquity, that transgression remains in the sight of God. But here, God says, I am the one who can really forgive you. I am the one who can blot out your transgressions and set you free. What a relief, what a comforting thought. That no matter what your past, no matter what your situation, no matter what despicable thing you may have done in your life, if you come to the Lord and truly repent, He will set you free, He will forgive you, He will cleanse you, and so you can face the day of reckoning covered by the blood of Christ, and you are free. This is an amazing promise, the hope of the gospel. Despite the truth of the judgment, God has provided every one of us a way of escape. Even David, when he committed a terrible sin, what did he do? He realized when somebody pinpointed to him what he had done wrong. And oftentimes, we don't think about it until somebody tells us about it. We may like to shoot the messenger, but remember that that is a relief, a redemptive relief given to us. And when Nathan came and spoke to David about his sin, he probably didn't like it, but he was humble enough to accept the fact that he was away from God, he had done something wrong, and he needed to put it right. Sometimes the things that we do wrong will have effects on our lives till the end of our days. Unfortunately, you cannot reverse those things. But even if that be the case, our sins can be blotted out. We can be forgiven. So that when that great day of judgment dawns, we can stand before the Lord protected because we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ and our sins have been blotted out simply because of the grace of God. God does not want anybody to be lost. He is not willing that any should perish. But the fact of the matter is that if our sins are not washed away, we cannot enter the holy presence of God. But God Pay the price for it. This is the wonderful story of his grace and hope. Every sin, except the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, can be forgiven. Because Jesus was sent by our Heavenly Father. And he protects us and keeps us. He will blot all sins away so that you can stand before the Ancient of Days. And the final section about the Ancient of Days is in verse 21 of the same chapter. 
which says, I was watching and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them until the ancient of days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. I'm not going to get into the prophetic aspects that are listed here except to say that Daniel speaks about the kingdoms of this world and the Roman Empire, the extended Roman Empire with its, uh, uh, with its uh, horns and ten horns and uh, the various faces of it. And in these verses, we read about the rise of the Antichrist before the coming of Christ. Actually, these visions are given in a reverse order. First the judgment, the return of Christ, and then what happens just before the return of Christ. The rise of the Antichrist, referred to here as a little horn, who speaks pompous words against God. And uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, referring to it in uh, 2 Thessalonians and chapter 2 and verse 9, gives us a description of it. And the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the workings of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. So here the apostle talks about the rise of the lawless one with the Antichrist. And John the apostle also talked about that in 1 John. And we read there that John says that there are many Antichrists in this world. Throughout the church age, there have been many people who have risen who have been against Christ. And it all culminates in the coming of the lawless one, the real Antichrist. And as the Antichrist speaks pompous words against the King of Kings, the Lord will destroy him with the breath of his coming. But John says in verse 18 of chapter 2 of the first epistle, little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. The forces of evil are always arrayed against the people of God. Let us never be surprised by that. And just like the lawless one will speak pompous words against the king of kings, here we are told that the anti-Christian forces will persecute the saints, but the ancient of days will deliver us and he will protect us. Yes, there will be a final judgment. Jesus will return. But at the same time, before Christ returns, God's people will be persecuted and they will have to face various trials and temptations and difficulties from those who do not love him. You may be facing your own little world where people are pressurizing you because of your faith. That is to be accepted. It has happened to God's people all throughout church history. Some have been miraculously delivered. Some have been called upon to face those difficulties even unto death. But we can be sure of this. No matter what happens in our lives, 
And no matter what the sovereign purpose and will of God is for every one of us, the Ancient of Days will give us his strength and grace to carry on. But he calls us to be faithful and true to him and not deny him. Because even though we may suffer tribulation for a short period of time, deliverance will come. There will be a terminus to our troubles. And when we are going through the fire and the flood, the presence of our Lord and Savior will be with us. This is the wonderful promise of the seventh chapter of the book of Daniel. We will be called into account, but we have shelter in the blood of Jesus. There will be times of difficulty, but God's presence will be with us. In a few moments, we will be celebrating the Holy Communion. And when we celebrate the Holy Communion, we will remind ourselves about the Lord who died for us and gave his life for us. And right now I'm going to pray. And as we look to the Lord in prayer, if you're going through a difficult situation in your life, just ask the Ancient of Days, God Almighty, the Sovereign Lord of the Universe, to give you His strength and His power, and commit yourself to be true and faithful to Him, no matter what comes your way. But if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, even at this time, you can cry out to Him and say, Lord, please help me. I repent of my sins. I want your forgiveness. I want to be cleansed by your precious blood. Blot out my sins with your precious blood. Now we're going to pray. And wherever you are, with whomever you are, more than anything else, the presence of the Lord is right there with you. And he will do for you what you call upon him to do. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you. We thank you for your mighty revelation in the word of God which tells us about the power of the ancient of days. Thank you, Lord, that some of us know you as our personal Savior. Thank you, Lord, that even on that great day of judgment, we will not have to fear because we are protected by you. Thank you, Lord, that with our hearts we look forward to the return of the Son of Man who will come in glory. And Lord, we just cry out to you today for those of us who are going through difficulties those who may be speaking pompous words against us hurting us restricting us constricting us pressurizing us because we love you and serve you oh lord give us a double portion of your holy spirit give us a relief that we seek from your presence this very moment touch our lives lord with your mighty hand. And if there is anyone who is seeking your face, O oh Lord, right now, who has never experienced your grace, I pray that as they open their heart out to you, you will touch them. And your saving grace will come into their lives. And they will be made new creatures in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. We praise you, glorify you, and honor you for who you are. O Ancient of Days. Amen. Here is love vast as the ocean loving kindness as the flood when the
glad I am that Jesus shed his blood on the cross of Calvary and that blood that he shed has blotted out my sins. The Bible tells us clearly that all the sins of the entire world were placed on God's Son, our Lord Jesus Christ who bore it on the cross. The Bible says he became sin for us, that we could become the righteousness of God. And as we celebrate the Holy Communion, we are gratefully reminding ourselves of the grace of God. And the Apostle Paul speaks about it in 1st Corinthians chapter 11 23 which I'm going to read right now as we prepare ourselves to partake of the Holy Communion for I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take the bread in our hands and remember that this bread reminds us of the body of Christ reminds us of the incarnation, God becoming man. And as we partake of it, give thanks to the Lord that Jesus came into this world to set us free. Let us all partake of the bread at this time. And let us give thanks to the Lord. Lord, we just thank you and praise you because you came into this world born of a virgin, lived a sinless life for us. We thank you and praise you from the depths of our hearts. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, this do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. 
Let us take the cup in our hands and let us give thanks to the Lord that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all our sins. Father, we just praise you and thank you for the blood that our Lord Jesus shed on the cross and the blood that cleanses us from all our sins. Thank you for the freedom. Thank you for the peace. Thank you for the reconciliation that we receive through the blood. Thank you that through the blood of Jesus, our sins are blotted out, remembered no more, and we can stand in your presence boldly. Let's give thanks to the Lord as we partake of the cup. Hallelujah. God is good and God is greatly to be praised. And from the depths of our hearts, we thank our Lord for his goodness and mercy in our lives. Remember that because Jesus has set you free, you don't have to fear the great day of judgment. Because Jesus has set you free, you are free indeed. You're a child of God. Now go forth to live in this world as a citizen of heaven, knowing that you are divine royalty and that no matter what troubles and difficulties and pressures may come your way, there is a great day of deliverance coming. And until then, we can live in the joy of the Lord, praising him, thanking him, glorifying him for who he is. And if you're a person who has come to know the Lord, during this service, or if you're still searching and you need help, please seek out someone who can help you close to where you are, or you can contact us and we'll be happy to help you and guide you in your journey of faith. God is good. His word never fails. And the presence of the Holy Spirit is always with us. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the fellowship and communion of the blessed Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. God bless you and be with you always. It is our joy to welcome you to our English service at Calvary Church, Sri Lanka. Our prayer is that you will worship the Lord Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth. May his holy word bring instruction, conviction, peace and comfort into your life. May you be transformed as you experience the love of Jesus, which is a love like no other. We would love to hear from you, pray for you and get to know you better. And follow us and our YouTube channel. On Facebook. Instagram. Calvary Church, Sri Lanka. Please contact us on the numbers on the screen. As well as our website www.calvarychurchsrilanka.com It is our desire to be a blessing to you and we look forward to hearing from you.